Ah, that's an interesting question. The home of heroes means to me a place called Pueblo, Colorado, that it honors its military, especially, especially because we have four Medal of Honor recipients that are hometown Puebloans. Um, but we also have done a lot more around this whole community to honor our veterans, and so I think it's really, that's why, why it's home of heroes, is because we have people that care about other people, care about our military, care about our first responders, and really do um, a lot to honor them. Good morning. My name is George Otterby. I am so honored to be a part of this project. I hope that during this time that we will educate and show you a little bit of the history and the contributions that veterans have done here in Pueblo, Colorado. There's only 26 Colorado recipients total. A little perspective, 43 million men and women have served in the military since the Civil War. Um, that's more than if you take the entire populations of all the uh, Mountain West states, put them together. It's, I mean, that's including you know, Vegas and, and Salt Lake, Denver, and all the small towns between. Yet only 3,509 have received the Medal of Honor. So it's very, very rare. And if you're looking from World War I, World War II, Korea, Vietnam, uh, War on Terror, and everything in between, there have been less than 1,000 Medal of Honor recipients. <laughs> and four of those guys of that less than a thousand are from here in Pueblo. Like they said, it must be in the water. <laughs> Something going on here. Um, Congressional Medal of Honor recipients are people who have done heroic acts beyond the normal. Um, I've seen a lot of heroic acts taking place but when I hear the stories of these Congressional Medal of Honor recipients, it was like, whoa, um, these guys. That's why many of them are dead, because what they were doing, they got killed for it. So the ones who did make it, uh, we should honor them. We should uh, acknowledge that uh, what they've done and that they're still doing. Um, we have the Home of Heroes um, uh, building here. Um, we have the Home of Heroes uh, organization that works, in fact, they were the ones that helped get the statues together over here for the convention center. So Mr. Rawlings said, we need to do something in the way of a, of a memorial, sculpture, something. And so we all got together and decided it would be four sculptures and they would be here at what was then the brand new convention center. And uh, to make this really a Medal of Honor memorial for all Medal of Honor recipients. We have granite plaques back behind here that list all the names of the Medal of Honor recipients since Civil War times. David Durham, a local sculptor, was uh, brought on board to, to do the sculptures. And he had a really unique uh, experience because he got to meet each one of these men as he, uh, did their, as he was doing their sculptures. And that's kind of unusual. Usually when you do a sculpture, it's somebody who's passed away. Uh, and you don't get a chance to see them or see how they smile or how, they're, how they, they crinkle when they're, you know, when they smile or what their ears look like or whatever. And they brought lots of memorabilia with them. I think people need to come and, come and view all the museums. They need to see the museums and, and be a part of that history. Learn a, learn a little bit. Uh, have compassion for other people. It's, it's important that they understand what a Medal of Honor uh, recipient is and how how uh, quiet and low-keyed 99% of these people are. These people are just people just like you and me and, the, and yet they, they embody uh, what, what, what it means to have mental fortitude and physical fortitude and they, they fought the battles and they, they're humble about those things and it's so, so awe-inspiring to see that and be a part of that history. Uh, and Pueblo has it, it's all here. Uh, what was very interesting to me was that I didn't know, and I think a lot of uh, Americans don't know, that African Americans actually participated in the uh, Civil War. 
And uh, that was quite a shock to me. And it actually started uh, uh, an, ex an examination when I was here in Pueblo. Uh, uh, Lucille Corsentino out at Roselawn Cemetery uh, knew me and, and told me that she thought that there were Buffalo soldiers buried at, at uh, Roselawn Cemetery. Okay. Civil War cannons and this cannonballs uh, that is dedicated in memory of our 355 Civil War veterans here interred here at Roselawn. The, uh, it was funded by contributions from the Puebloans years and years ago. Actually, uh, money was created, uh, was collected by a gentleman by the name of Isaac and his wife Bessie. And uh, this is the result of their efforts, which is a nice, nice tribute to our Civil War veterans. We're here on uh, Elizabeth Avenue. Uh, we are here on what was called the Avenue of Heroes. It was originally started in the 1920s for World War I veterans, but since then it was expanded. So at the far south end of Elizabeth, you will find a memorial to those who fought in the Spanish-American War. There's even a piece of the old USS Maine, which was blown up in Havana Harbor, as many of you know from your history, and which led to the beginning of that war. At the far north end, we have the Doughboy, which is representative of World War I. Next to that, you may see is kind of an oval with what looks like a W in it. And that is the symbol for the 89th Division of the United States Army, which fought in France uh, for United States Expeditionary Forces there. We have numerous uh, Spanish-American War veterans buried at Roselawn Cemetery. This particular area has been designated with this memorial uh, commemorating those that served in the Spanish-American War. And as you can see, we have the, the white military headstones for those that chose to be buried here. However, please keep in mind that they are also scattered throughout the cemetery. But this particular monument commemorates those that did serve in the Spanish-American War. Okay, this is the uh, Retired Enlisted Association, and uh, this is their memorial garden. See, it says back there, the Retired Enlisted Association, TRIA, that's what that stands for. And our family was expected of you to serve. There was, there was no uh, question. And uh, these symbols must be protected. They must be, uh, additional ones should be provided so that the young people realize, hey, um, what, what these soldiers went through was, was, was quite demanding and they should be acknowledged for the sacrifice that they made in, in regards to help and protect this country. Oh yeah. We gave everything, okay, to in something we believed in and that we as veterans not only did our job then, but we're still committed to our communities. And a lot of the veterans, uh, the awards I received these last couple of years was not only for my military service, but for my community service after. And that's the leadership program that the Latino Chamber has for the veterans program every year. They were doing a acknowledgement of uh, Profiles of Courage. Those are things that we as veterans love because we see other veterans uh, and their accomplishments and they were acknowledged for them. So to me that means quite a lot and I compliment the Latino Chamber for being a part of uh, how could pull that together? George ought to be that wrote the book and all that. Yes, yeah, he's a friend of mine. He's a, he's quite an interesting man. Pat is uh, an East High graduate, class of 1966. I didn't know Pat well, but I did know him. Uh, he was a typical East Side kid. He enlisted in the Army, was in Special Forces, uh, right after uh, right after high school graduation. He was killed in Vietnam in March of 1968. Uh, I remember uh, his memorial service at East High School uh, later that month. And it was, a, it was a very sobering event for all of us who were looking at uh, probable military service in one way or another. So Pat has always kind of been a hero to me because he so epitomized Pueblo, the East Side, and all the good things that, that characterize this town. Uh, so much so that it was, it was kind of serendipitous, but it was my honor 
um, as a county commissioner to advocate for the new Eastside Library on 7th Street to be named in his honor. And so to this day, if you go to, uh, to the Eastside Library, it's the Patrick A. Lucero Library. Uh, and uh, I'm just very happy to have been part of that uh, process that eventually named the library in his honor. Yeah, so Apolonio Gomez is my grandfather, and he was a, a U.S. Army medic for 24 years from about 1950 to about 1975. Um, he was in Korea and in Vietnam as a Bronze Star Award winner and a Purple Heart Award winner as well. Um, so it's very interesting that he was involved with so many different forces that were considered special forces and uh, Green Beret, Special Forces Rangers, Hell on Wheels, uh, the Big Red One, they're all pretty significant units that he was involved with. Um, during 23 years is a long time to be involved with those different groups, uh, but it's very important and very special that he was involved with all of these groups during the Korean and the Vietnam War. So here in Pueblo, Colorado, the home of heroes, there are many families with different um, materials like this, awards, achievements, memorabilia, that signify that their families were um, a hero in any sense. If it's just you know, that family looking at that person and saying, you're my hero because of the things you did for me or because of the things you did for our country or for our city. But there are many people in Pueblo who could probably go through old storage closets or um, bookshelves or storage units that have many awards from many families and many men and women um, that were involved with the US military and a lot of people here in Pueblo have many many rich stories from their family members um, going back multiple generations that have served in the US Army so it's a very proud thing for Puebloans to show that we are the home of heroes um, and all it takes is a couple of folks like our fine photographer here that go out and they find um, treasures throughout families that have um, kept these things in closets and in bookshelves and in storage units for many, many years. I think Pueblo is unique in, in its respect for uh, the military, uh, not just the Army, but, but all of the military service. Uh, the people in Pueblo uh, have always been exceptionally receptive to, to the, uh, the military man. Uh, and we spend a lot of time honoring the soldiers and veterans in uh, all of our services. Uh, and that goes from uh, the Pueblo Veterans Ritual Team, uh, who does an honor of, of uh, burials throughout the city and, and as a matter of fact, Southern Colorado. Uh, for any veteran that, uh, that would like to have a military burial, we do that. Uh, and I'm a member of that team as well. Um, the Home of Heroes uh, has been a, uh, an exceptional thing to, to meet and to, to be with some of those uh, men that have earned the Medal of Honor is uh, quite an honor uh, to have here in Pueblo uh, and we're very, very happy for that. We believe everybody has the potential to go above and beyond. The Medal of Honor citation always starts with above and beyond the call of duty. But no matter what our life is, you don't have to run into a burning building or save a bunch of people under gunfire to be a hero in your family's life, to be a hero in your neighborhood's life, to be a hero in this community's life. Just do what you do best. And if you do that well, and you have a selfless attitude about it, it's gonna make this community stronger. And the more we make this community stronger, the more we're gonna make Colorado stronger, the more we're gonna make you know, this nation strong in social repairs. Because as much as sometimes we get a bad reputation or a, or a bad, uh, oh, that's Pueblo, the truth is I think a lot of places in the nation could learn from Pueblo right now to show our multicultural background, to show our unity, to show the fact that, again, when it comes to outside influences, we band together. When it comes to hard times, when the mill almost went down, we band together. When the flood came through 199 years ago, Pueblo banded together. Pueblo finds a way to unite in the most difficult of times. 
which let's be honest, right now in this nation, we're at one of those times. But as you look around, you walk the streets and you go around this wonderful city, you see that a lot of people might be able to learn from what we have here in public college.